not all realtors are created equally. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Welcome to the show. The show is the MLS Search and Analysis Show. And I am your host, James Wise. And what I do, what I do for you is I comb through properties that are listed on the MLS, right? That's where all the realtors put their deals. And then you guys either give me your criteria and I search for properties that meet it, present it to you with a nice bow on it, right? Give you all the insight that you're going to need as a real estate investor, right? Because most of these agents, almost all of them really, they don't focus on investors. They focus on owner occupants. They ain't going to be able to talk to talk. They ain't going to be able to walk to walk. They haven't done $200 million worth of investment sales. They don't run the largest uh, property management uh, operation of its type in the Cleveland market. They don't do uh, Section 8. They don't deal with construction, maintenance, insurance. Holton Wise, we do, right? We're the biggest name in town, okay? So that's what I do, right? And today I'm working with my man Abe. Abe, you're from Pennsylvania, right? And you found this deal. You like it quite a bit. It's in Lorain, Ohio. It's super duper cheap. It's listed at 43 G's. And all told, it makes sense for you, right? Based upon all the uh, properties I'm looking at for you, this would be a great deal. As a matter of fact, brother, you are not the only one that I uh, have done this property for, right? You just looked at it. You just sent it to me. You're like, dude... Maybe we could do a deal here. Tell me what's going on, right? I've actually had other investors that have similar criteria to you, and I've sent this to them. I've done an analysis on this. I'm like, yeah, this deal would be great. And then that's where the coolness stops, and then the realization that a lot of you need to understand is that not all realtors are the same, man, okay? Um, what you really need to look at is how much the people that you deal with are making, folks. That's very important, right? No knock on McDonald's, but, like, if I go to McDonald's, dude, like, the cashier at McDonald's, right? If it's, like, a 35-year-old dude and he's a cashier at McDonald's, okay? I don't have high expectations of him, right? I don't expect him to be, like, the greatest salesman in the world, right? He probably doesn't have an MBA, okay? Things of that nature, right? There's levels to this, right? High-quality individuals, typically make a lot of money, minimum uh, effort givers, let's call it, folks that put in the minimum effort, they usually make the minimum, all right? So if you look at the real estate industry, a couple things you need to understand. Number one, it's 90% annual turnover rate, almost. It's like in the high 80s. I think it's like 88 or something. It's different every year, but moral of the story is every year, if 10 people sign up to be agents, by the end of the year, about nine of them have quit or got fired or this or that, right? So only one in ten succeed, okay? So when you talk to agents, folks, if you talk to ten agents this year, next year probably nine of them aren't agents, okay? And in the real estate industry, right, the ones that succeed, okay, they succeed because they're making money. What they want to do is they want to go where the money is. $40,000 houses is not where the money is, okay? So when we're dealing with $40,000 houses, you're looking at agents that are going to make commissions of like 800 bucks, 1000 bucks, right? Super tiny commissions, right? And then the really good agents, you know, they're working on like four or five, six dollars $600,000 properties, right? Making like $25,000 commissions, right? Like if you're really good at your job, do you want to make 25k or you want to make 800, right? So you're always going to get like the bottom of the barrel agents, right? So then... You get some folks that want to work with Jay Wise, right, who's obviously a master of his craft, and then that's why I do this show. That's why you got to pay for it, right? If you try to call my office and you're like, hey, man, uh, I'm an investor. I own them by $40,000 properties. Great. No problem, bro. Uh, here's the fee for me to talk to you through the videos, right? You got to fucking pay to play, motherfucker, right? I know what I'm doing. I'm really good at what I'm doing. I'm not running around uh, all day looking at 20 properties for somebody for an $800 commission, right? If I did that, right, I'd be making, like, literally minimum wage. Why the fuck would you take investment or monetary advice from anybody who's making minimum wage? That would be fucking stupid, right? So I make you guys pay up front, right, to make up for the lack of commissions on these deals. And, of course, through my other 
uh, you know, streamlined process and downstream businesses, I make my money, right? There ain't no scenario where we're working together where I ain't making a lot of money. You just need to understand that, right? It's important, though, right? It's important for you to understand that, right? Because there's a flip side to that, right? With high-quality people that are masters of their craft, you're going to get high-quality insight, high-quality service, high-quality advice, right? So we've already established JYs know what he's doing. We're going to move on from that. It's what leads me to what I've been trying to get to, the point I've been trying to make this whole video, right? I've sent this property to a couple other investors, thought it met their criteria. We've submitted full-priced offers, and we're getting, like, nothing, dude. It's like... We've said that this this particular agent has like listed like six or seven houses uh, for like the same client and like you know over the course of like a month we've sent like countless emails, phone calls, talked to their broker, even went so far as to track down the out of country owner and reach out to them and like we're getting like barely nothing. We're not getting any coherent responses. I don't even know if they want to sell it. Sometimes you run into these scenarios where the agent is completely incompetent. I'm not going to exactly say that's what's happening here because it could be that or it could also be a scenario where things have broken down between that owner and the agent and the property is just kind of like left up in limbo on the MLS, but a deal just isn't going to transpire, right? Like we're just getting nothing. There's no rhyme or reason to why you could think logically about this or that. Like, oh, well, they must want to sell it, right? It's on the MLS. Well, bro, I've already been down that road, okay? I mean, literally, they're asking 43. We've presented $43,000 cash offers clean. Like, I, I mean, that's, dude, it is what it is, bro. You're, you're not always going to get uh, top-of-the-line agents, right? It's just not going to happen in the low-income space, right? So, like, you're not going to get clear answers, right? Sometimes you're going to call and call and call and call, and they just don't pick up the phone, right? That's a reality of working in this business, and that's why a lot of the people that at first they, they you know, they reach out to Holton Wise, and then my team tells them, yeah, you got to pay money to work with James. And then you get people, ah, I pay, and there's realtors that will do that for free. And then they fucking swim around the bottom of the fucking pool for, like, two months, and they realize, you know, I'm not getting anywhere. Nobody knows what's going on. People aren't calling me back. And guess what? They come back to Holton Wise and they happily pay the piper, right? So, with all of that said, Abe, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the footage of my original monetary analysis of this property. And if you want me to present an offer, I will. Totally fine, bro. Uh, but... I don't see any scenario where, like, we, we get any type of uh, response or reasonableness, uh, reasonable reaction out of the other side to get the deal done, right? I've, I've been down that path, and, uh, you know, I don't know exactly what's going on on the other side, but what I know is, you know, it's, it doesn't look likely this deal's going to happen. But here's the footage as you requested. You might be wondering why I'm walking around in a bikini. Because this is America, that's why. Land of the free, home of the brave, the land of opportunity. Like the opportunity to click the link below and start investing today. Welcome back. Let's do the damn thing. Let's do what we are here to do, right? We are here to get into the details on this property because anybody can talk to you about how cool it is to invest in real estate. We got a property here, only requires $10,000, but we have to get into why that is. Why is this property so cheap? What are the levels of risk involved with this particular property? What's the good? What's the bad? What's the neighborhood like? What's my ownership experience going to be like? That's what it's all about, okay? Now, the address, 1100 West 12th Lorraine. It's been on the market almost a month, 26 days, priced at forty-three grand. Now, you could do this deal for ten grand if everything goes the way I want it to. And the way that would be is the price, I think we try to pick it up for $40,000. You are going to put up $10,000. And then I have lenders that are going to give you, well, loan you. They ain't giving you that shit, motherfuckers. You're going to pay them back, right? You're going to pay them back the other thirty k. But here's the best part. Your tenants are really the ones who are paying it back, right? You put up 10, the bank puts up 30, 
your tenant pays you rent to pay off the 30 plus the interest and you collect cash flow. It's an amazing thing. The way this should work, the numbers, right? Market rent, $1,000 a month, $12,000 a year. You don't get to keep that twelve k a year. Anybody telling you you do, they're lying or they don't know what they're doing, folks. There's fixed and variable expense estimates you need to account for, which I have done for you in that chart. What you can reasonably expect to earn is approximately fifty-seven seventy-three a year. Now, if we pick it up at forty k, you put down ten thousand dollars. Bank kicks in thirty. That will project out to a fourteen point four cap or a forty-three percent cash on cash return right where else can you get a 43 percent cash on cash return right that's why holton wise is so popular that's why investing in this market is so popular it's very hard to get returns like that for that small amount of money but that's not where the video ends okay if i ended the video right there with that it just sounds amazing and then the smart folks out there are like whoa Bro, that's fucking great. Why the fuck has this property been on the market for 26 days and nobody else has bought it yet, right? See, if you're the person out there who's thinking that, you're smart, right? Because we've got to do due diligence, understand why. Cleveland's a cool market, man, but it ain't the fucking land of milk and honey, right? Dude, like, there's pros and cons to this, right? Well, you have to understand about what you're getting into here, right? This particular house, which, by the way, we only have one photo. This photo right here. That's it. We have active tenants in there, right? They're already living there. It's hard to get uh, tenants to comply with, like, people going inside of their properties, taking photos, right? So don't uh, think the listing agent is trying to hide something for you from you, right? I don't think they are. It's possible they might be, right? Unlikely, but it's possible. But we're going to figure that out through the due diligence, right? This video, this video is just step one of the due diligence process. We're going to, of course, make our offer of $40,000 contingent on a third-party home inspection where we'll go through the property with a fine-tooth comb. But I know I get a lot of people out there that are like, oh, they must be hiding something. No, you're just new to the rental game. You don't understand, bro. Tenants, like, they're not, like, just down to make your life easy. They don't want people bothering them in their house, right? They live there. Not to mention we're going through corona, right? It makes it even harder. So this is normal inside of this home. Do I anticipate everything is beautiful? No, 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 no. But you don't renovate occupied properties, folks. That rent that I gave you that kicks off the 43% cash on cash return long term, that's not what the current tenant's paying, but don't get caught up in that, right? The current tenant... They're paying seven and a quarter plus uh, water, right? So they're paying 800. But if you looked at the chart, which I'll pop the chart up again, charts up again, as you see water and sewer, we have you paying the water and sewer. Uh, the way things work out here in this market, it just makes more sense from a liability standpoint. If you cover the cost of water and sewer, you can't really pass it on to the tenants. More info on why is in our fact, right? So right now you're effectively getting a tenant in there at 800 as opposed to 1,000. Do you get to just increase the rent to a thousand when you take over? No. Can you legally do it? Yeah. They're month to month, so if we give them a thirty day notice, you can do that. But guys, that's not how it works, right? Every action's gonna have a reaction, right? If you just immediately jack up the tenant's rent, they're probably gonna move out. And if they move out, well guess what? Now you gotta renovate the inside of this house. We don't know what it looks like, but I'm telling you it's it's not moving ready to get a $1,000 a month tenant in there tomorrow. That's not how it works. You don't have $40,000 rentals where you get in there after a tenant moves out. And it's fucking spick and span, dude. If you believe that, you need to watch more of my shows. You need to watch the Tenants from Hell show because that's not reality, right? You're probably going to be putting in ten, fifteen, possibly $20,000 to get it rocking, ready, beautiful, Section 8 ready to go. Then we can bring in uh, the Section 8 tenants, right, and get that 1000 Right now, though... Not the case, right? But that's okay. We don't need to worry about increasing the rent that 200 a month. What we want to do right now is ride out these paying tenants as long as we can. Money is coming in the door. If money's coming in the door, your job as a landlord is to collect it. Put that fucking shit in your pocket, okay? I get so many of you new investors out there who want to send money out here to buy a property and then the next thing you want to do is figure out how you could just send more money out to the cleveland market for your property bro i love money 
I will take you guys' money every day of the week, right? But it's not the smartest move, right? Here's the deal. $200 a month, one way or the other, it's not going to make or break your career as a real estate investor, okay? What's going to make or break your career as a real estate investor? What's going to really make this a performing asset versus a non-performing asset is how often you have to do $10,000 rehabs or $4,000 turns or miss three months of rent between vacancy, the turnover time, and the releasing time, right? And then paying the leasing fee, right? You'll probably amount to around three months of missed income there, right? You want to avoid that stuff. You can never not have it. That's part of the business, right? But it's those investors who mitigate that, deal with that as infrequently as possible that make the most money, right? So we don't want to create an artificial turnover. So we want to ride the existing tenants as long as possible. Maybe next year, increase the rent 25, maybe 50, right? Ride them out. You want to push back that next turnover reno as long as you possibly can, right? In this neighborhood, this is like a CD grade neighborhood, right? So we are not dealing typically with like, Two adults with college degrees moving in your houses, folks. Not the case, right? Section 8 is amazing in neighborhoods like this. It's your friend, right? Because neighborhoods like this, when people run into life problems, they're like one broken down car away from missing rent, right? These are not people that have six months of savings in their bank account, right? That's not the type of tenant base you're going to get when you buy a $40,000 property. And that's not for everybody, right? I know a lot of people out there just think because maybe they live in like LA and they just think everybody in Cleveland lives in $40,000 houses. It's not the case, bro. Like we have expensive houses in this market too, but we also have a lot of really low cost houses that you can't get in a lot of markets. But you have to understand what the market's like, what that really means. And that's what we do. And I think I've done a very good job of explaining that to you. I factor in a lot of those issues, right? Which is why you don't get to keep the 12K, right? You're spending more than half of that to pay me to operate this property and to just pay for the costs that come along uh, with running a property like that. But over the long haul, this should cook off a hell of a return. You just got to follow the steps that I've laid out for you. Make smart decisions and don't be in a hurry to try to send money out here. Collect the money while it's coming in. Take the money you currently have and focus it on another deal, right? You only need 10K to get into this deal. Spend your 10K, get into the deal. Take that $800 that's coming in currently and instead of trying to kick out that income source, create an artificial turnover, take your next 10K and duplicate this deal, man. That's what this game is about. It's about a game of scale. You want to get to a lot of doors quickly because when you have your inevitable problems with these properties, your performing assets are going to uh, create income while one or two of your properties go through uh, the normal stages of investing where they're, they're costing you money for a, a brief period of time. Because that, folks, that's the rental game in a nutshell. And then my team will handle everything for you, the property management, the maintenance, all that jazz. But first, it starts with us putting in an offer, submitting an offer to the seller. And I think 40 k is the right price. I believe we will be able to get them to accept that then we will do our due diligence make sure they're not trying to hide anything make sure there's no structural repairs if there's some crazy thing that happens in that inspection report letting us know the property is a dud that's what i'm here for letting you know hey we need to back out of this deal or hey it no longer makes sense at 40k let me try to get the seller to give us 5k 10k 15k off things of that nature Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.